Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato. On today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about how to get a huge bass drum sound. Now you notice I have three bass drums in front of me. Some people call them kick drums. The difference between these three, other than being three different brands, this is a Yamaha, this is a Leedy, and this is a Rogers. They're also, as you can see, three different size kick drums. This is a 22 inch. This is a 24 inch. This is a 26 inch. What is the difference between them? Well, this one is made out of birch. This one is a three ply maple poplar maple. This is also a three ply maple poplar maple. The three ply drums here have what we call reinforcement hoops that are made out of maple that keep the drum round. Now, one thing that is common between the three drums is that they're all 14 inches in depth. That means from here to here is 14 inches. So from here to here, here to here, okay? That is the depth of the drum. Now, I've done hundreds and hundreds of drum sessions over the last 25 years. And one thing that I've noticed is that drums that are narrower, that are narrow in depth, actually sound bigger. They also sound punchier. If you look at John Bonham, for example, he has a massively big kick drum. He played a 26 by 14 kick, okay? So this kick drum, has a big sound. It doesn't just have a big sound because it's 26 inches. John Bonham actually tuned the drum very high, like a jazz drummer. But one of the reasons that it sounds big is that the air moves through it really quickly and reacts off the second head. Back in the 1950s and 60s, drums were pretty much only made in 14 inch depth, okay? So you'd have either 18 by 14, 20 by 14, 22 by 14, 24, 26 by 14 inch drums. It wasn't really until the, mm, you started seeing, uh, you know, 22 by 16 show up in the 80s. Then you saw 22 by 18 show up in the 90s, then 22 by 20, and 22 by 22 would be these ridiculous drums. That, they would be so long, and I, and I would mic the things up and say, Man, that's got no bottom end, why is that? So I started thinking about it. Well, they have so much more mass, it's very hard to get the drum in motion, right? If you think about it, the more mass it has, the more energy it takes to excite the drum. So that's one element of it. You also can't get the air moving quickly through it and get to the other side to either hit off the other head or get out of the ported hole as you notice, two of these drums have holes in them. You'd notice that by the time it got to there, that it wouldn't have as much energy, the, the burst of the kick drum. You wouldn't hear that punch of it. Speaking of exciting drums, here's a clip of John Bonham soloed so that you can hear what a 14 by 26 kick drum sounds like. Here's another example. Woo! That's what a 14 by 26 should sound like when tuned and hit properly. So I'm gonna give you some examples now on my Ludwig kit that's set up over there of another thing that produces a big bass drum sound, which is playing with the beater off the head as opposed to what we call burying the beater. Let's check it out. For this demonstration, we're using two different bass drum mics. Inside the bass drum is an Electrovoice RE20, and outside the bass drum is a very old school 1960s AKG D30. That's gonna give me the, the bottom end of the sound. Here is an example of burying the beater. Let's check it out. You notice that the kick drum has a lot of punch to it. It's, it's got really good bottom end, but it's tight. Once it hits the resonant head, it's not coming back, okay? So it's a really short sound, but real punchy. Here's some examples of drummers that are playing with the head bearing the beater. Here's an example where I pull the beater 
off the head and allow it to really open up. Check it out. Let's check out some drummers that are playing with the head open. The point is to be flexible moving between all the techniques. Like toe heel, heel down, toe heel, full foot. You'll notice there's a lot more bottom end when the beater's coming off the head there because it's letting the drum resonate. That can work really well for slower tempo songs where you have a lot of space between the kick drums, but most great drummers will play using both techniques. So remember, the depth of the kick drum is very important. It's not to say that you can't get great sounds out of 16 inch or 18 inch deep kick drums. We discussed the technique of burying the beater or of pulling off. When you bury the beater, it actually limits the low end of it, chokes the drum out. Coming off the head lets the drum resonate and is better for slow tempos. But you should be able to master both of them. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. If you're a new subscriber, remember to ring the bell. If you're interested in the Beato book or anything in my store, mugs, t-shirts, this is how I support my channel. Go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. I do a lot of guitar videos there that I don't put here on YouTube. And if you want to support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks so much for watching.